Zoax.net. Lesson 7, Numerical Operations. This will be a quick overview of some of the basic numerical operations in PHP. If you are familiar with other languages, there may be some slight syntactical differences, but a knowledge of the concepts should make this easy to grasp. The differences between various languages are mostly syntactical. This first program demonstrates the basic arithmetic operations addition, subtraction, and multiplication. PHP also provides an operation for exponentiation. Here we have x to the yth power, and the operator is written with a double asterisk. These operations all work similarly for floating point numbers and integers. However, the division and modulus operators have a different syntax for floats and integers because of the nature of division. Float-based division uses the slash like many other languages. However, because of the weak typing of PHP, this division will result in a float if it operates on two integers that do not divide evenly. To perform the normal integer division with an integer result, you need to use the int div function. The modulus operator, which gives the remainder, uses the percent symbol. It is important to note that if the modulus operator is used on floats, they will first be converted to integers by truncation. If you want to perform something like the modulus operation on floats to get the remainder of an integer-based quotient, you can use the fmod function. For these examples, I use single quotes to show the variable names, double quotes to show the values, and concatenation to display the result. You will see that for all of the operations. Executing this program, we see the results of all the operations. Most of these are straightforward, addition, subtraction, multiplication, and even exponentiation. For the division operations, things may be a little confusing at first, but if you take a little time and try them out, everything should become clear pretty quickly. This second program illustrates the assignment operators. When we put an arithmetic operator together with an equal sign, like x plus equal y, this is equivalent to x equals x plus y. In the program, I have used the assignment operators for the four basic arithmetic operations, plus the exponentiation operator and the modulus operator. Executing this program, we see that the addition and subtraction operators and multiplication and division operators undo each other. After those, we have the exponentiation operator. Finally, we see that repeated applications of the modulus operator do not do anything, only the first application. The technical term for this is idempotent. So the modulus operator can be said to be idempotent when it is applied with a specific value. This third program illustrates the increment and decrement operations. Increment means to increase the value by 1, and decrement means to decrease the value by 1. So increment and decrement are inverse operations. That is, they undo each other. Like the assignment operators, the increment and decrement operators incorporate shorthand notation. The increment and decrement operators are specified with a double plus and double minus respectively. And when we write x plus plus, it is really the same as saying x equals x plus 1. And when we write x minus minus, it is the same as writing x equals x minus 1. These operators have an additional quirk to them in that we can put the operator either before or after the variable name and the effect is somewhat different. When we write the operator with the plus plus before the variable name, it is called a prefix operator. When we write the plus plus after the variable name, it is called a postfix operator. Both the prefix and postfix operators will increment the value. However, when we evaluate the expression, the postfix notation will evaluate to the value before the increment, and the prefix value will evaluate to the value after the increment. Rather than try to verbally describe the difference, it is probably easier to look at the output of the program shown here. In the first two lines, we see that the value IA is 1 before each operation, but the prefix increment operator evaluates to 2, while the postfix evaluates to 1. The value before it is incremented. There is some history behind these operations, and many people find the code that incorporates these differences difficult to deal with. Personally, I avoid evaluating the increment operator and just use the prefix operation on its own line of code to avoid difficulties. You can even avoid the increment operator altogether if you like, 
and just write x equals x plus 1 or x plus equal 1. Just use whatever makes the most sense to you when programming. Of course, the decrement operators work similarly. This fourth program introduces the random number generators. Random number generators are useful for simulating dice rolls, but they have many other applications as well. It should be said that there are no actual random number generators, since true randomness is not possible to simulate. So these are often called pseudo-random numbers because they appear to be random. The functions for generating random numbers are rand and mtrand, and they generate integers according to the range of values specified. For example, this call generates an integer in the range from 0 to 1000 inclusive. Without getting into the technical details, there are various methods for generating random numbers. PHP used to use an older method for the function called rand. However, both rand and mtrand now use the same algorithm for generating random numbers. As I mentioned before, these functions generate pseudo-random numbers. To set the starting point for random number generation, we can use the seed functions, srand and mtsrand. When a seed value is set to a specific value, the number sequence that is generated will always be the same. This can be useful for generating a set of test values that are always consistent. Finally, we have the getRandMax and mtGetRandMax functions. These functions return the largest integer value that can be generated. Note that if the rand function is called without arguments, it generates a value in the range from 0 to getRandMax. Also, if we call srand without an argument, it generates a sort of randomized seed value that is probably based on the time. Executing this program, we see that when the seed function is passed 0 as its argument, and we call the rand function with 0 and 1000, it generates 539 for both versions of the function. However, when we call the seed function with no argument, we get a different random number each time. These are the three large values that are generated at the end of each section. I also called the getRandMax functions to show the largest value that can be generated. 